It's Supermoon Wednesday. Well, what is it? Where can you find it? Well, stick around because Dr. Brad Tucker and I are diving into this Talking Science Story of the Week. Across Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube, this is Talking Science with Dr. Brad Tucker and Matt Miller. And our last story of the week this week, Brad, is it's the story of Goldilocks. I think in terms of black holes, there's a mummy one, there's a daddy one, and now we found the kid one. Although we probably found the kid one and the dad one, and now we found the mum one. Well, I, I, no, I really call this the teenager phase, <laughs> uh, right? We, we, we've had the adults, which are the supermassive black holes, the big black holes in the center of our galaxies. We've had the children, what we call the stellar mass black holes. These are when stars explode, they produce something only 10 to 30 or 40 or 50 times the mass of our sun. And we've only. seen those only, yeah. <laughs> and we've seen those collide and felt it. But how do you get from the small ones to really big ones? Well, the theory was the small ones eventually keep colliding and growing and growing and growing to get the big ones. So those medium-sized ones should grow like the teenagers. They're growing very awkwardly. You don't really (laughs) want to deal with them, but you need them just to go through as quickly as possible to get to the big ones, to the adult phase. (laughs) And so they've been a bit tricky to find because... The supermassive black holes, we always find them in the center of galaxies and they're destroying stars or gas and they give off signs they exist. The small ones collide relatively nearby and we can feel their gravitational waves. It's kind of hard to detect these intermediate mass black holes, but space telescopes think they have found one. And this one is 3XMM and it's doing this this sort of thing and it's only 50,000 times the mass of our sun. It's a bit impressive. Only. But but, but, that, but that actually <laughs> is quite important. Again, we're, we're very good at finding the millions to billions of ones. And these these 10 to 50 to 100 to 200,000 solar mass black holes should exist. We just haven't found it. Uh, and using this X-ray telescope, they found a burst of light. And this happens when a star gets near a black hole. The black hole will rip it apart. So sold this kind of signature of a black hole, but when the Hubble Space Telescope pinpointed its location, it was on the edge of a galaxy, not in the center. And the supermassive black holes occur in the center. So there was clearly a black hole out there big enough to do this, but not so big that it eventually migrated and merged into the center, which is kind of a big sign that this exists. And the research has uh, been a long time in the making. Uh, It first detected the, uh, or the satellites first detected the powerful flare of x-rays in 2000. Six. Yeah, you know, we, we, we they saw the sign, and it's just taken a lot of time to refine, all right, is it in the Milky Way? You know, it could be something that happened actually in a cluster on the edge of our own galaxy. Is it on the, which galaxy is it in? And then where in the galaxy? It's all taken a series of observations, so that initial X-ray observation, then a higher resolution X-ray observation to pinpoint its location, and then following up with bigger telescopes to actually resolve the local area and say, that is the spot. And then also to measure how powerful the explosion was to estimate the size of the black hole. And it's not the first uh, likely candidate, uh, although this one's now been confirmed. So uh, there was another one called HLX-1. Uh, is that also an, uh, an, a, a medium-sized black hole or is or was that disproven? No, no. So there's still, there's still the theory still, the, the, the evidence still is that is an intermediate mass black hole. The location was really never pinpointed. This one is actually a little bit better because they are able to follow up with such so many telescopes actually find that location the other one we knew happened and most likely not in the center of a galaxy or our own but we were never able to find the exact location of the hubble space telescope and figure out where it was uh so it's still we still think it exists and and it's important we should find lots of these we know there are probably an order of a million stellar mass the small black holes in our own galaxy, so on the average galaxy, something like that. And then eventually you get that supermassive black hole in the center of one. So there should be quite a few intermediate mass black holes per galaxy. So they should be pretty common and we should be able to find them. And, you know, it's just amazing how much in the past five years, really, our knowledge of black holes has been transformed through the advent of gravitational waves and detecting these stellar mass ones to the Event Horizon Telescope and that image of the black hole we saw last year to now finding these medium ones. We're really starting to understand these somewhat mysterious objects. 